I'm studying an MA in Development Studies at the University of Sussex on the Mandela Scholarship, which I believe you endeavoured to begin during your time here. At the time in which you came to Sussex, I believe this was not really your first choice. But looking back, I hope you found much value in your time here. After all, you are well remembered at Sussex, and generations of students that came after you were inspired to come to this university through your path. A lot has changed, Mr. President, since your time at this university. I believe the time you had your classes in Stanmar Park, as the university campus was still being built at the time. But by the time you graduated, the Farmer Quad behind me was completed, and so was the library. So Tabo always had this very serious side, but on the other hand, we all had student parties. He was a student as well. And the parties were really good in that they entailed interesting chat, you know, not just about politics or about South Africa, but philosophy, politics in general, British politics, poetry. He talked to my husband who read English. And I remember later on when he stayed with us in London, um, listening a lot to Beethoven symphonies. Mr. President, I think you remember this location and this night. The clock tower in Brighton on the night of 13 June 1964. The Rivonia trial had just reached its conclusion. Your father and his comrades, Mr. Mandel, Sisulu, Katrada, Mutualedi and Nshaba, had been found guilty of treason. The world awaited their sentence. You organized a march from Brighton to 10 Downing Street in London with a petition protesting against this injustice. The mayor of Brighton closed the road for the march to begin and you marched to London with a group of Sussex students. Being England, it rained all night, but you marched on and delivered the petition and then joined thousands of others in Trafalgar Square to call for an end to this injustice. It may have seemed difficult at the time, but apartheid was eventually defeated. We owe our freedom today to freedom fighters like you and so many others. We did that overnight march, got to number 10, knocked on the door, and you handed over a letter for the Prime Minister to a bemused doorkeeper in front of the TV cameras. Tabo, during your time at Sussex, you were an inspiration to many of us. You got me to help you write an economic strategy document for the ANC Youth, which definitely set me off on a career as a development economist. Tabo had done things in his life already that most people wouldn't have dreamed of doing or having done to them. When you first moved to Sussex, you lived here in Wentworth House with Mel Goodick. Well, Wentworth House is still a guest house today, so maybe next time you visit Sussex, they can arrange a room for you here, for old time's sake. He used to come to the house um, as a student, along with many other young South African students who were studying at Sussex University. The house was busy, busy, busy all the time. And, you know, we would greet him, of course, when he would come in. And it didn't matter what time of the day or night it was. He would always say, good morning. And we thought this was the funniest thing we'd <laughs> ever, ever heard. Because it was kind of like, he doesn't know the difference. <laughs> you know, and so we would laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh. And he played up to that a lot. He was very warm and very funny as well. La he laughed a lot. For myself and my brother and my sister, we sort of just grew up with the assumption that he was like a, an older brother. In your second year at Sussex, you moved to Lansdowne Place, where you shared a flat with Peter Yates and Derek Gandhi. Lansdowne Place is quite expansive nowadays, and it's been heavily renovated, but it still has those wonderful views looking out into the sea. We're always good friends. Tabo was a... Um, lived with Derek and Mike Yates in a very orderly flat, I remember, not like the usual student flat at all, so I don't know if Tabo was very orderly too, but it was a very, very tidy, clean flat, and they cooked proper meals as well.
my 18th birthday. Um, I was a huge ballet fan, still am. Mrs. and Becky. Oh, well, didn't she surprise me? They gave me for my birthday front row tickets for myself and some friends to go to the Royal uh, Ballet and to watch uh, Rudolf Nureyev and Margot Fontaine. I know, do Romeo and Juliet. It still gives me shivers to think about it. I mean, oh, it was just like the pinnacle of my life right there. I could have died that moment after I'd seen that performance. I didn't need to live another minute. Mr. President, I'm sitting in the gardens at Sussex Square, Brighton. When we met in September 2019, you told me the story of a young man living in Brighton who spent New Year's Eve at a party in Sussex Square with a Scotsman and a few whiskies, I believe. I think it's only fair that you tell the story. You tell it so much better than I do. So maybe during your birthday celebrations, you'll share it with a few friends and family. We went on holiday and we said to Tabby, will you feed our cat, right, while we were away? <laughs> and he said he would. And anyway, on, I don't know what he was doing, but he was at, completely on the other side of London doing something or other. He suddenly remembered, my God, I haven't, f <laughs> I haven't fed their cat. <laughs> so he got a taxi all the way from wherever it was, you know, to feed Ginger. So we were very, very impressed when we were told about this. But how reliable is this person? <laughs> Here's a street, Mr. President, you might have been very familiar with in your last year at the University of Sussex, Sibwood Street. One zoo we went to, there was a load of monkeys and the guy who seemed to be showing us around, who's white, said, and this is our latest edition, we've called it Tarbo, this monkey. So nobody knew how to respond to this. Tarbo didn't say anything. But isn't that awful? While living in Lansdowne Place, the old timers at the university tell us that you would enjoy a pint of beer in a pub called the Star of Brunswick. Sadly, Mr. President, not everything has survived over the past six decades. You can see that the pub has closed and is now a private house, but there are still plenty of pubs and bars in Brighton serving a good beer and offering a means for students and many alike to unwind and de-stress. There's a story about a student in the 1960s who would walk into the Star of Brunswick, a little pub in Brighton, and he'd walk up to the bar and he'd order his pint of beer. And while the landlord was pouring his usual, he'd take out his pipe and he'd take out his matches and he'd light his pipe. He'd pop the match into his pint so he knew which pint was his. I think you know who I'm talking about. So it must be so easy to forget, you know, old friends or people that aren't particularly important, to forget them when you become so grand and see so many people. But he never did. He asked us to go on holiday with, we were very, very privileged and honored, you know, to be invited. And it was wonderful that he wanted the Sussex people, so he's never forgotten us. And when Mel died, he rang me a couple of times and was so nice and sweet and wrote the most beautiful letter to me about Mel. I think of all the people that we met in Tarbo as stands obviously above everybody else. I and mean, I'm so pleased that he remembers it too. Thank you.